too often, animated movies are written off as overly kid-friendly, unsophisticated fluff, when the truth is the medium is capable of telling stories as mature as the most prestigious live-action dramas. Sometimes, however, an animated movie ostensibly made for children can also be spooky enough to terrify the most hardened youngsters and even a few adults, like me. Don't look back! I look back! So whether they were intentionally spooky or simply featured a couple of freaky moments that made every kid hit fast forward, we put together a list of the scariest animated movies that terrified the young audiences they were meant to entertain. Number 10, Monster House. Monster House is ultimately charming and fun for most, but this is, after all, the only proper horror film on this list, and while it's largely kid-friendly, it's also suitably frightening in spots as any haunted house movie should be. The film follows three kids who decide to explore the creepy old house in their neighborhood with a terrifying reputation. It feels like a 1980s Amblin movie, full of adventure and comedy, and more than a little danger, thanks to a few intense scenes courtesy of the imaginatively rendered house. As LA Weekly's Scott Foundas said of the film, Film, Monster House becomes one of those wonderfully weird adventure stories beloved of children who don't mind getting a good old-fashioned case of the heebie-jeebies. It's kind of a blast for adults, too. Critics say Monster House welcomes kids and adults alike into a household full of smart, monstrous fun. But if I let her go, I'll have no one. <sighs> That's not true. The Last Unicorn. Horror and fantasy are two genres that don't cross nearly enough, but when they do, they offer unique experiences. The Last Unicorn skews more towards fantasy, but it still packs enough spooky elements to make it a scary film for kids. Rankin Bass may be better known for their holiday classics like the stop-motion animated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but this fantasy epic about a unicorn who discovers she is the last of her kind and embarks on a quest to discover what has happened to her kin is full of horrific dangers. Without a doubt, the most frightening for kids was the fiery red bull, evil incarnate with its deep blood red color and almost hollow eyes that no doubt inspired countless nightmares. Writing about the film for Time Out, Jeff Andrew explained that The Last Unicorn has some horrific moments, the mark of the best fairy tales, and some sublimely witty lines. Critics say The Last Unicorn lacks the fluid animation to truly sparkle as an animated epic, but offbeat characters and an affecting story make it one of a kind for the true believers. Magic, do as you will! 
What have you done? Number eight, The Great Mouse Detective. A noir mystery starring mice may not necessarily seem like a film that would give you nightmares for days on end, but you would be wrong. Based on the children's novel, Basil of Baker Street, which itself was inspired by the tales of Sherlock Holmes, The Great Mouse Detective starts with a little mouse girl named Olivia celebrating her birthday with her father at home when suddenly a one-legged bat breaks into the house and kidnaps the father. The film's eerie atmosphere persists throughout its runtime, and even when there are moments of levity or sweetness, they're usually followed by moments of utter terror. For many children, the bat represents their first experiences with jump scares, as he is responsible for the two most frightening ones in the film. First, when he bursts into Olivia's home at the beginning of the movie, and later when he leaps out of a baby carriage to abduct her. Small children may be afraid of some of the bad characters. The Disney Studios gift for creating really nasty bad guys means that they are scary, but they will love the cute brave mice and cheer their triumphs. Adults will enjoy the wit and style. Critics say the great mouse detective may not rank with Disney's classics, but it's an amateur entertaining picture with some stylishly dark visuals. Number seven, Watership Down. It doesn't take long for Watership Down to shed its cute bunny film facade and reveal a deeper allegory that flows red with blood. This adaptation of Richard Adams' novel follows a group of rabbits on a perilous journey to find refuge after one of them has an apocalyptic vision about their home. For generations, Watership Down has traumatized children with hunting imagery of red-eyed rabbits ripping each other's throats out or suffocating as they're buried alive and peril lies around every turn in the story. Walter Cha, film freak central, summed it up succinctly sentimental and terrifying. Critics say, aimed at adults, perhaps more than children, this is a respectful, beautifully animated adaptation of Richard Adams' beloved book. <laughs> yeah. I told you once I was trying to impress you. I hope I have. I told you that I would kill you myself. There's no white bird here, big week. <laughs> My chiefs told me to defend this run. Your chief. Number six, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. For decades, Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Incorporated gang have served as an introduction to horror for kids, offering mildly creepy stories that always ended with an ah shucks and a smile. Well, not Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, which marked the first time the gang faced a real supernatural threat as they set out to find ghosts and monsters in Louisiana. What starts as another typical Scooby-Doo adventure quickly devolves into a tale of voodoo, ghost pirates, vengeful cat demons, and of course, zombies, all tied together by a tragic backstory much darker than fans of the show 
would have been accustomed to. There aren't any greedy tycoons in rubber suits here, and actual death of werecats and humans alike is a major element of the plot. There really isn't anything else quite like this in the Scooby-Doo canon, and any kid going into it expecting the usual antics was in for a shock. Trace Thurman from Horror Queers Podcast says this film retains the Scooby-Doo IP's goofy charms while simultaneously working as a surprisingly dark form of gateway horror for children. Also, it's perfect. Like, on your mark, get set, ignition! <laughs> What's the matter, chicken? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we ditched him, buddy. <laughs> Number five, Coraline. On the surface, this stop-motion adaptation of Neil Gaiman's novel is a silly story of a spunky, bored little girl who finds a hidden door to a secret world where everything is perfect, yet slightly off. But just like its hidden parallel dimension, Coraline is freaky and frequently plain horrifying. As soon as Coraline finds a secret door, the story begins to unfold like a horror film, ramping up its creepy atmosphere and frightening creatures. But the real terror comes from the moment Coraline is given her own set of button eyes to be sewn on by her creepy other mother, before she transforms into a giant spider and all hell breaks loose. Moira McDonald summarized it for the Seattle Times by saying, quote, children who like being scared will get a kick out of this wildly creative movie. Adults needn't have a child in tow to enjoy it too. Critics say, with its vivid stop motion animation combined with Neil Gaiman's imaginative story, Coraline is a film that's both visually stunning and wondrously entertaining. After all, you still need to find your old parents, don't you? Too bad you won't have this. Be clever, miss. Even if you win, she'll never let you go. I already know where you've hidden them. Hmm. Well, produce them. They're behind that door. Oh, they are, are they? be there, all right. You're wrong, Coraline. They aren't there. Now, you're going to stay here forever. No, I'm not! <laughs> Number four, The Secret of Nim. 
If you thought animated movies featuring talking animals were all sunshine and rainbows, think again. This film, based on the children's novel, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, follows a field mouse as she tries to save her ill son both from his pneumonia and from the farmer whose land they live on before he plows through it. Don Bluth's adaptation is full of truly terrifying moments involving the survivors of scientific experiments, including a rat-eating cat named Dragon. But the scene that really traumatized kids was the visit to the great owl, whose introduction includes includes a lair littered with bones of his devoured prey, a gruesome encounter with an ill-fated spider, and a pair of creepy glowing eyes that stared into your very soul. Bluth's films also skewed a little darker than typical Disney fare, and this was a prime example of his aesthetic. As critic Christopher Knoll wrote for FilmCritic.com, never mind the G rating, this is scary stuff which sent my little one fleeing to another room inside of 10 minutes. Critics say, The Secret of Nim is a dark, well-told tale that respects its young audience enough to not tone down its subject matter. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Ask any horror fan and they'll tell you that Christmas and horror make for a fantastic combination, but this is one of the rare times that the two cross over in animated form, and it's mostly a delightful treat. From the mind of Tim Burton and Henry Selleck comes the story of the pumpkin king of Halloween Town, Jack Skellington, who gets tired of the same annual festivities and decides to kidnap Santa Claus and take over Christmas. As sweet and funny as it is terrifyingly gruesome, The Nightmare Before Christmas is a visual treat, even if those visuals are frequently bizarre, off kilter and a little macabre for the toddler set. The best example is the burlap sack villain Oogie Boogie, who literally refers to himself as the Boogeyman, and who meets his demise when he comes apart at the seams and reveals he's full of creepy crawlies. As Alan Jones wrote for the Radio Times, only the deliciously demented imagination of Edward Scissorhands director Tim Burton could have come up with such a dark vision of the holiday season. Critics say The Nightmare Before Christmas is a stunningly original and visually delightful work of stop-motion animation. Sandy Claus. You wait till Jack hears about this. By the time he's through with you, you'll be lucky if you can. The king of Halloween has been blown to smithereens. Skeleton Jack is now a pile dust. <gasps> Come on, Zero. Christmas isn't over yet. What's that you were saying about luck? Rag and dust to dust. Oh, I'm feeling weak with hunger. One more roll of the dice ought to do it. <laughs> 
What? Snake eyes? Good. Eleven! <laughs> Looks like I won the jackpot. Bye-bye, doll face. And bad man. <laughs> Number two, who framed Roger Rabbit? Wait a second. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a live action movie, you might say, and you'd be mostly correct, but Robert Zemeckis' loony live action animated hybrid deserves a spot on this list because it features one of Disney's scariest villains, Christopher Lloyd's Judge Doom, who, spoiler alert, is actually a cartoon himself. When we first meet Doom, he mercilessly murders an innocent tune without flinching, dumping into a vat of corrosive dip. Then comes the pivotal moment when we discover Doom's true identity. As played by Lloyd, he already resembled a half-desiccated corpse, a cross between the evil preacher from the Poltergeist movies and the Gestapo officer from Raiders of the Lost Ark who gets his face melted off. But once he's run over by the steamroller and pops back up, Doom is another beast altogether and the stuff of childhood nightmares. Critics say Who Framed Roger Rabbit is an innovative and entertaining film that features a groundbreaking mix of live action and animation with a touching and original story to boot. could only be cooked up by a tune. Not just a Spirited Away. Japanese animation maestro Hayao Miyazaki's films have been described as beautifully made artistic wonders and visual masterpieces, but frightening isn't a sensation you normally associate with his work. That being said, Spirited Away is his most haunting film, and it is more than its fair share of creepy moments that sneak up on you and make a lasting impression. The story of a girl lost in a world ruled by spirits is as whimsical as a Disney film, but it doesn't shy away from disturbing imagery, like when young protagonist Chihiro sees her parents transformed into monstrous and endlessly hungry pigs, or when the spirit no face begins to devour all the employees of the bathhouse in a wild frenzy. Children who toughed it out through the more frightening moments were rewarded with an enchanting, magical experience, but for some kids, that would have been a tall order. Critics say Spirited Away is a dazzling, enchanting, and gorgeously drawn fairy tale that will leave viewers a little more curious and fascinated by the world around them. this. It's delicious. Want some gold? I'm not giving it to anybody else. Come closer, Sin. What would you like? Just name it. I would like to leave, sir. I have some place I need to go to right away, please. You should go back to where you came from. Yubaba doesn't want you in the bathhouse any longer. Where is your home? Don't you have any friends or family? No. No. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. What is it that you want? I want Sen. I want Sen. Take the gold. Take it. Are you going to eat me? Take it. Yeah. 
Well, friends, that about does it for us. Be sure to stay tuned to the Rotten Tomatoes channel for more of the entertainment content you love and for even more news, scores, and recommendations on the latest TV shows and movies. Head on over to RottenTomatoes.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Naz Perez, and we'll see you back here for more Top 10s on the Rotten Tomatoes Countdown.